In this video, we're going to subtract mixed numbers, which require us to borrow. If we can't subtract two fractions, we are going to have to go through the process of borrowing from the whole number. The trick will be to keep track of what we're borrowing from the whole number. In this first example, we're looking at 6 and 2 fifths, and we're subtracting 2 and 11 fifteenths. We know we need to start with the fractions and get a common denominator between 5 and 15, which will be 15. Multiplying the first fraction by 3 over 3 gives us 6 fifteenths. The other one, 11 fifteenths, already has the denominator we want, and we're ready to subtract. The problem is, we can't take 11 things away from 6 things. This is where we are going to have to borrow. So we'll come to the 6 and borrow 1 from it. 6 drops down to 5. What we are borrowing is one whole number. Keep in mind the denominator is 15 here. 15 fifteenths is one whole. So we've borrowed 15 pieces. We already had 6, so now we end up with 21 left over, or total. Notice what we do as we borrow is we are adding the numerator and denominator together. We borrowed one whole, which was 15 fifteenths, added to that the 6 fifteenths, which gave us 21 fifteenths. We are now ready and able to subtract 21 minus 11 is 10 fifteenths. And we can subtract 5 minus 2 to get 3 to get an answer of 3 and 10 fifteenths. Of course, we always want to reduce our fraction at the end. You'll notice 10 fifteenths, numerator and denominator, are divisible by 5, which leaves us with 2 thirds. We get our final answer of 3 and 2 thirds. If we can't subtract the fractions, notice we had to borrow one whole, which means we ended up adding the numerator and denominator to get our new numerator. Let's try another interesting problem, which requires borrowing. Dang it. Here, we have 9 minus 5 and 3 fourths. When we line up, 9 minus 5 and 3 fourths, a common error to be made is people think on the right side, we don't need to subtract anything. But we need to be careful, that doesn't mean we just have 3 fourths, because actually what's there is nothing, or 0 fourths. Nothing is represented with the number 0. Conveniently, I picked the matching denominator, so we didn't have to do any work. I could have picked any denominator I wanted. Because we have 0 fourths, or nothing to subtract the 3 from, we do, in fact, need to borrow from the 9. The 9 drops down to 8, and we add the numerator and denominator together. 0 plus 4 is 4, and now we're allowed to subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1 fourth, and 8 minus 5 is 3, giving us our final solution of 3 and 1 fourth. Subtracting often requires us to borrow from the whole number, one whole, which means we will add the numerator and denominator together.